pyrolysis uh, i think uh, uh, what is good and uh, what can be adopted so i had been doing a kind of uh, intensive study on this particular aspect so mm. here the opportunities uh, for everyone is there in pyrolysis so if somebody want to go with uh, the uh, basic uh, technologies or uh, kilns or retorts or even like burning in the pit method and all that so we have umpteen opportunities and uh, nobody is left out in this whole uh, pyrolysis as of now because uh, there are standards and there are qualities and there are types of biomasses and uh, types of biochars and everything has a value and uh, somewhere it has uh, it can be applied and used so that is there the ultimately cost benefit analysis is one thing uh, that is very critical in any project so unless the uh, farmers are happy with uh, uh, the effort they are putting in and uh, the result they got also should be able to have some justification in doing what we are doing so this is a very important aspect so as uh, more and more people would adopt then uh, standards would develop or uh, the stringent norms and other things might come into existence but as of now it is like uh, there are few stakeholders or from the higher level say so there could be a pollution control board but when uh, communities are doing within their geographical area say within 5 km 10 km and applying then and there on their own so uh, it doesn't attract except in uh, the places where uh, it is already restricted say in the uttar pradesh haryana and uh, punjab areas where stubble burning had been a very big issue and it is contributing to the pollution there they might be putting some restriction but still i think uh, uh, they have not arrested any person till date that much i can say farmer especially in this regard so it doesn't mean that they can go on doing this uh, yeah, in their own way uh, but how to reduce the pollution will remain an important aspect so that's where our training aspect brings in that component where uh, we don't pollute much but at the same time we add value to the uh, crop residue otherwise which is burnt just like that or wasted if it has value like compost or uh, as animal feed or some other use like uh, thatch or uh, fencing or different values that uh, they have that's perfect so apart from that we have millions of tons of uh, biomass and uh, that is wasted uh, within india that we all know so in this regard i think um, yeah, we find a very big opportunity overall so that is uh, comes to the fundamental i mean to say at the bottom of the pyramid uh, uh, people adopting uh, biochar and uh, how they can produce uh, that uh, methodologies so right from pit method trench method or quantiki method so all these methods uh, will go on uh, but still training is required at least two days training is required for the farmers if not uh, for others uh, i say three days Uh, but farmers uh, their learning curve is uh, more as they already are in the field and of uh, field to field workshops are very much required and when things are happening we have to conduct uh, pictures and uh, videos or our talk all these things uh, are fine and that is one way but beyond that i think practically showing uh, is real achievement i feel so these are also very much required in the whole uh, this involvement of communities in the pyrolysis to uh, believing uh, what they have created and what it can do so that is one thing so second thing is coming down to the kilns are um, these are not uh, the perfect ones uh, but here we may not uh, trap the say the syn gas perfectly or uh, wood vinegar or the bio oils including tar we may not harvest everything here but these are a little bit uh, improved versions 
so that we can reduce the emissions and the quality of uh, the biochar that we produce um, uh, will be improved in the in this process so this can go you know, with communities who are skilled a little bit more and uh, where such feasibilities are there and we have say a bigger wood say 5 inch diameter wood the or lengthy wood say 6 feet or 4 feet or 3 feet something like that so kilns are like earth mount kiln is one thing which is very popular the dome structures uh, that can be uh, done uh, they are also with bricks and uh, uh, local soil we can do and they are also good ones uh, where improved uh, quality of HR we can generate and uh, that becomes a livelihood opportunity for the people involved and uh, it has huge opportunity also for them so that much I can guarantee as uh, the prices of uh, all energy related including biochar or charcoal or even activated carbon everything is going up so here i see a great opportunity again so here we need to have this cooperative systems for bringing up communities or new people into the sector if those traditional people who are already involved and they are doing that is one way uh, we can encourage them to organize themselves and uh, provide even basic facilities like drinking water, shelter because overnight they sleep there only uh, because it is like 10 days or one week or even months together they have to do sometimes. Apart from that establishing uh, communication between this forest department uh, people because uh, they are the people who give permits for these kind of products because uh, one need to ensure that we have not depleted the local forest and creating biochar. So for that reason, forest department plays an important role in permit system. And uh, this uh, involving uh, the pollution control board department as well as the forest department uh, comes into picture in this kind of large scale production where at least uh, 2 ton, 3 ton, 5 ton in from each batch can be produced. So this is again batch wise production of uh, the charcoal or biochar and uh, this I think uh, once the organizations are including uh, we uh, as a focused uh, uh, people into biochar production on a large scale let us say then definitely we have to get into these kind of systems uh, because our mandate is also production as well as facilitation let us say then we need to work here then apart from that uh, this doesn't uh, cost much actually, they cost uh, less than uh, 50,000 rupees also or even Arthmond it costs only the skill and uh, like that. So other uh, improved versions let us say are cost related like Kontiki is one thing, this is an open, see we have only three systems in pyrolysis. One thing is combustion, second is pyrolysis and third thing is gasifier technology. So in the three technologies we can produce biochar. Combustion is like from your own cook stove where you are cooking by using fuel wood. It is like open burning only. There is enough oxygen in the process and it is very much open not restricting any oxygen inflows. But quenching that at a stage when it has become the charcoal or biochar that is the procedure here. So combustion you can understand now I think. Then pyrolysis is like restricted. Restriction is like a flame curtain method in Kontiki, let us say. It means uh, above when there is a flame, the gases uh, or oxygen that is joining at the top and it, this oxygen is not going below. Then also a kind of uh, curtain is happening there. So this curtain is preventing your um, complete combustion or turning it into ash. So these methods are there, whether it in his earth mound uh, cleans, uh, uh, we use the soil as a media to cover up and give few holes for little oxygen only to enter or even in the constructed uh, what we say uh, pots we call local jargon or cleans uh, constructed with bricks, uh, the dome kind of structures. So there also some oxygen goes but restricted oxygen is there and uh, these things happen. 
so these are the methods and beyond this uh, what i am saying is like we have uh, pyrolysis actual pyrolysis so actual pyrolysis means almost all no oxygen entering into the once it is shut the whole device uh, then no oxygen enters into it see imagine like your own pressure cooker same uh, model is the best model see in your pressure cooker uh, there is no oxygen enters into it once we uh, shut it and light it some gases or um, uh, the steam or something can come out what we say say 80 to 150 or 200 degrees something like temperatures uh, the moisture laden uh, gases which come out in a pyrolysis so that is what we call wood vinegar let us say that is one stage and beyond that we get the bio oil and also we get the tar so that is coming out but no oxygen is entering in something like that so by condensing them um, getting various byproduct that option is there here so i have my one video where i have demonstrated these things using the pressure cooker so these are retorts proper pyrolysis retorts but uh, the challenge is around 35 percent or 30 plus percent of the biomass by weight is required to heat it we might be turning back the pyro gases or syn gases back into this uh, units uh, uh, below because we'll be feeding and burning again these gases so that way efficiency is improved there or even uh, insulating this uh, units uh, uh, like um, wool uh, material you know some uh, wool uh, silica wool something is used uh, so that is uh, possible for efficiency but still uh, that uh, 30 to maybe 40 percent also in some retorts that much biomass we need to uh, use here so that is uh, one uh, thing still but uh, the final product that we are getting is high quality one here i think uh, people are using this uh, particular technology for um, all kinds of biomasses uh, especially if it is two inch three inch thick biomass that has more value uh, because the quality of biochar or the time taken to convert into biochar uh, is also uh, less and good quality biochar comes but if it is uh, 5 inch or 6 inch in some of the retorts especially there are two types of uh, retorts here actually one is horizontal one is vertical so in a horizontal one uh, actually the transfer of heat into that retort is limited because it is uh, horizontal and uh, the contact zone or the area where this fire touches from below that is limited so but in uh, the vertical one we have a more area under contact and um, even if there is damage or something here we can um, uh, take out that uh, bottom part and uh, reweld it so that much we can do as i said the vertical one is having more priority and then this vertical thing it is like our own pressure cooker kind of technology where there is a good enough pressure also inside so you might be the temperature that reaches uh, inside maybe around 450 500 like that uh, because of some pressure up to 3 kg per uh, uh, like square centimeter to 5 kg per square centimeter pressure is there so this particular uh, pressure is also helping to improve the quality of the biochar so all that is embedded within biochar the pores everything is very clear so the quality we can have like activated carbon or even export uh, grade uh, biochar in this uh, uh, pyrolysis units which i have seen in uh, char gold already they are doing it so now you have seen a range of uh, all things uh, apart from that we have finally the continuous pyrolysis units but this continuous pyrolysis units we have some challenge cost wise especially say for the light materials uh, continuous pyrolysis units are very good and easy to convert within say few minutes as it uh, goes on a belt moving belt 
and we can continuously have this biochar that uh, can be ensured even if you want to convert uh, any thick woody biomass then again you have to chip it uh, into a particular size and put on this continuous pyrolysis units and it has its own advantages and disadvantages is basically the cost these units are very huge and uh, uh, even mash makes or uh, many people are involved or even to tune it to a particular biomass they need to invest a lot in their technology and uh, all that is required so they are doing also some people so like cashew nutshell uh, pyrolysis units uh, created by mash it's working very well for them and uh, they are selling the bio oil and uh, so this is how we have a range of uh, pyrolysis uh, uh, technologies as of now because we are working uh, at the community level as of now and we want to help the, say the farmers uh, in uh, using their biomass and how to convert them into biochar and also helping them to convert them into various products first product is for soil amendment so bringing up this uh, biochar plus it could be compost or manure or uh, plus other amendments it could be your nutrient enriched biochar or inoculations that we bring up or any other uh, materials uh, it could be organic or inorganic or including something like uh, uh, the tank silt or even the sand or gypsum or rock dust there are umpteen things that can be blended and farmers could create uh, very nice products and uh, they can use and as well as they could create a uh, industry or enterprise out of this as localized uh, biochar based fertilizers so it's a wide range of products and uh, and they can also design for particular soils or a particular geographical area so this is the opportunity that they have Uh, first it begins with enrollment of farmers who are interested based on the crop that have sown let us say cotton growing area is there just mapping in a radius of 5 km from where we intend to establish that is the best bet as of now 5 km from so we don't attract any other uh, legal issues and uh, uh, many other permits and those things are not required if you are uh, producing and consuming within that geographical area so that thing you can look so within the cost it is not about technology so though you have to put up when uh, you are putting the total viability cost uh, so all cost we have to bring up actually so here uh, the first option would be earth pit or trench method that is the best option for us to start with because uh, within no time we can do that and uh, that is a proven technology and uh, uh, we have already this uh, registries uh, in india happened i myself trained uh, uh, three people in this regard who got enrolled for their carbon credits and all that with some agency and uh, as a uh, after enrolling they need to get a training so the training i have provided so here uh, the trench method is one thing other also have provided training on kontiki method also so that's an option left to them because each kontiki costs around trench method hardly it costs 1000 uh, to uh, 2000 rupees only only we have to see what kind of soil it is if it is black cotton soil it collapses uh, but whereas when i seen in alluvium in uttar pradesh the soil was good enough to work with uh, Uh, because it was standing uh, like that so instead of uh, a vertical trench we can give a kind of slope uh, slight slope so that uh, the uh, sides are stable like that we can work out so this uh, 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 then kontiki it can maybe around uh, 35000 to 50000 one kontiki that much it will cost uh, so that uh, because that is the cost of steel second challenge is mobility is a very big issue whenever you want uh, let us say you have finished in one field then you want to take to another field then uh, tractor mounted uh, then people have to carry and uh, say if it is a season one quantity how many farmers can use 
मे बी टेन फार्मर्स कैन यूज सो हाउ मेनी क्वालिटी केस यू रिक्वायर देन आफ्टर वर्ड्स थ्रू आउट द इयर से यू हैव यूज फिफ्टीन डेज और वन मंथ लेटेस्ट से आफ्टर दैट दे लिव दे आर जस्ट लाइंग आइडियल आर नो बट इज यूजिंग मच बिकॉज द बयोमास इश्यू इज मोस्टली कम्स इन से नवंबर डिसंबर जनवरी फेब्रवरी लाइक दैट एज ए सीजन सो मोस्टली आफ्टर जनवरी ओनली दिस पर्टिकुलर इश्यू कम्स so that keeping it idle uh, is a again cost burden for us uh, and uh, people may not be willing to use for other uh, conversions uh, and they don't find much biomass afterwards so that way i see quantity is uh, people are uh, putting up because for them to show that exclusivity see an ordinary farmer he might have seen somebody making in a pit method uh, by chance so any farmer can do it because they have roadside trench or any uh, even their own open well which is not used by them lying uh, dry even they can use it because uh, you can restrict the air movement there and uh, you can do so that way uh, their exclusivity is not there for the agency which is working for that reason uh, we are bringing this kind of devices telling that uh, Uh, this device produces the best biochar whereas as you said uh, the box type quantiki or whether it is the conical inverted cone kind of quantiki or ring of fire or there are n number of other uh, pyrolysis technologies uh, of different shapes and sizes in everything you can do only the advantage in this kind of metal uh, uh, this uh, devices or cleans is uh, basically contamination is zero actually because uh, when you do in uh, soil uh, some contamination happens but uh, that contamination is not a contamination if a farmer is using for himself let us say because uh, even if it is mixed soil it doesn't matter if it is not selling or if it is a product for uh, local utility uh, then that's perfect even burnt earth has more value uh, like biochar it has some value i say always 50% value the burnt earth also has so they to buy it sir and uh, only when they want to sell it to somebody then definitely this uh, soil and uh, buy it sir gets mixed up and uh, sometimes uh, when we are weighing it uh, for our carbon credit and other reasons all this things need to be considered so how much contamination on an average is there in this kind of buy it sir but otherwise the conversion ratio is a good thing from where we can get uh, what is the quantity of biochar no quality is almost all the same it uh, only this uh, uh, quality of biochar is same both in quantity and uh, the trench method quality as it is but the contamination is uh, uh, it is not even contamination i am telling if they want to use it only when somebody wants to sell then questions come that's the thing actually so this uh, methods are viable and uh, people are adopting and the uh, choice is uh, between us uh, but i feel uh, let us say not invest so much uh, 